Okay, so we're going to talk about, uh, in this third video, framing a hide and the way that I do that. And the frame's kind of important. You can make a pole frame, but these big heavy bucks will warp your frame when they dry. And uh, for my method, or process that I do, the drying is a real important step. So I frame every hide uh, after I get it fleshed, uh, drained, and washed. Uh, then I'll frame it. So this frame is uh, made from full dimension 2x4s and it's 5 feet wide inside by 6 feet high and uh, I kind of uh, robbed Melvin Beatty's pattern for this frame. That's a real good frame in that it'll hold pretty much almost any deer. Uh, I've had a couple of big bucks that didn't quite fit in there and had to go to the elk frame, which is quite a bit bigger, but uh, almost every deer will fit inside this frame. And you might notice there's uh, some screws here around the outside on the face, and then there's the eyelets in there. Uh, the screws are for drying into rawhide because it's this quick to wrap around those with the string, and these are for the softening when I lace it back in the frame for softening. All right, so we have a hide here that's been uh, fleshed and membraned and grained, except for the, uh, the neck portion there. I Pretty much on these bigger bucks, I always uh, just get that as close as I can, and then I'm going to, after it frame, it's framed and dried, then I'll dry scrape that neck off. Uh, it's just a whole lot easier than trying to power that off. Okay, so I put the hide in a bucket because that keeps everything nice and clean and then I have uh, this board I use for uh, punching the holds on and it's just a piece of pine board that's made so that it slips on the edge of the bucket uh, and then I've got a, an old boning knife here that uh, uh, has got a really sharp point on it and it makes exactly the right size holes so and I kind of have a system I start out uh, at the top of the neck and the left hand corner and then I go clockwise around the height it's just what I do uh, can't tell you why but that's just just the way that I do do the holes and so what you're going to try to do is make sure that you had all the high spots in the corners and everything so I'm going to start out right in that corner and about approximately every three to four inches you're going to punch a hole. So just like so. I'll just go right on around the neck here. On the neck I'm staying pretty close to about three inches because I like that neck to have a little extra, a few extra holes, especially for the softening part. And you want to make sure when you're doing this that everything is laid out flat and it's not folded underneath because if it's folded underneath you're going to put an extra hole in your height that you don't want. So we're just so I'm running that all the way in and you're in about approximately half inch from the edge of the height and parallel with the height, the edge of the height. So, And if you have to put holes a little closer together to make things work out, that's okay. It's not like a uh, a science to this or anything. We're just kind of, you notice I don't have a measuring tape measuring every three or four inches here. We're just kind of eyeballing it and getting approximate. And the idea is on this three to four inches, that's about right for a deer height. You could go a little wider on bigger heights, but uh, my pegs here that I'm going to wrap the string around are right at about three, three and a half inches. So you want to keep these holes about the same because we're going to try to get a real straight pull on this thing when we're done. Okay, so I use paracord uh, for my uh, string to lace the heights in the frame. Uh, you can use baling twine, you could use whatever kind of string you've got handy. Uh, baling twine, the modern plastic stuff, you can use it one time and then it's, it's uh, shot after that. But it is free, so uh, that's one consideration. Uh, this stuff lasts 
I've been using these same strings for hundreds of heights, so it lasts and lasts and lasts. And what I have found is about a 12 foot uh, piece is about all you want, so I try to, uh, I have a few shorter ones as well, but 12 foot's a real good uh, length because if you have to make any adjustments, uh, you don't want a whole 120 feet of string around this height to have to adjust. So about 12 feet, and I start out uh, <clears throat> at the neck up here. I'm going to just go ahead and run through a few holes. And I come through the back side, always come through the back side. Every time I run the string through the height, it's from the back. And I have a reason for that. And I'll tell you here in a minute when we get this hung up. So I'm just coming through those holes and kind of getting my string there about or approximately the loops about the same size roughly. I always start at the neck, I hang it neck up and that's just the way I do it. Some of you guys that uh, have done this before, you may have a different way, and that's fine. This is just the way I do it. So it works well for me. And I'm not going to change my ways. Okay, so I went from corner to corner of the neck there. So I've got some tag ends uh, hanging off of each corner. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, Bring this thing up on the frame here. Start with this left hand corner. And I'm going to just hook it over one of those pegs. Next loop, just like so. This really helps you get started uh, easier doing it this way. Okay. So from the back side, like so, and I'll have Justin hone in when I get down a ways here. I'll have him hone in on my knot that I use. Uh, very simple, half hitch is all. Okay, so we got. Okay, so what I do is. Uh, I know some people do different things, they'll use bungees or whatever, uh, but I just start out with neck up just like this, and then uh, I'm going to go from side to side, and what you're trying to do is keep even tension on the hide as you're uh, lacing it in there, and you want it to be pulling fairly straight. Uh, more or less anyway, and if you have to go over the same peg two or three times, that's not a problem. You'll see me going every direction here before we're done. But those pegs are a little quicker than the eyelets, and the eyelets you have to use for the softening because when the hide loosens up, uh, it'd fall off of those pegs. So. And one thing I might mention is here, we're not trying to uh, make this thing drum tight in this spring. In fact, if you if you really stretch it tight, uh, it's rough, dry. When it dries, it's going to pop all your holes out. So you want to just kind of up in this part where it's real thick, you can go a little tighter. But I'll show you how loose we leave it when we get down to the bottom here. And it takes a little practice to learn how to frame a hide and, and uh, you're going to, if you try it, you're going to find that you're going to have a tendency to want to drift down too far on your pegs here as you're going along and, and it'll cause you a little bit of trouble. If you do that, 
you'll have to do a lot of adjustments on your on your height. Okay, so I'm just using a real simple half hitch for my knot. Uh, it's just a slip slip loop, just like so. That's all there is to it. Very very simple, uh, quick quick knot, and that's that's not going to come loose. That'll hold as the hide dries and starts uh, pulling in. Uh, those just actually get tighter, and then when you're uh, ready to unlace it after it's dry, just give it a pull. And uh, and then you're uh, you're ready to go there. Okay. okay, so we've gone down both sides pretty much, pulled kind of pretty evenly there. <laughs> I kind of forgot about this uh, this hide. Uh, when the fellow that got it dressed it, he actually cut a pretty good chunk out of the belly area on this side, so it's going to be a little bit odd shape, but that's fine. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. Still a lot, of, a lot of good hide there. Now, especially along this bottom edge, you don't want to pull this uh, stream very tight. You want it to be pretty loose because uh, along the bottom edge, it'll definitely pull all your holds out if you go too tight so I leave it pretty pretty loose and it'll tighten right up in the frame as it dries. Get my fire going and the fan going and we have one back here that was only on the frame about two hours and it's almost dry all the way. Things nice and loose, just enough to keep it on the pegs. Okay, uh, this is why you might need a few shorter strings because you're gonna sometimes end up with a, uh, you just have a couple more holes to go, so you don't need that 12 foot piece. So I've got some shorter, shorter pieces. And then we'll put a green one in there, make it look like Christmas here. very long at all. The whole, the whole thing is about 30 for me, but I've done hundreds of them, so that's consider that when you when you try to do one that it takes you longer. Uh, don't say bad words about me, but I've, I've done hundreds of them, so that's the reason I can do it in 30 minutes. But uh, other than uh, this odd shape on there, We've got everything uh, pretty pretty nicely uh, framed there, and when that dries, it'll it'll look real good. Here's one that I framed only maybe two two hours ago, and it's it's almost dry already. That's a real nicely shaped hide. And, uh, I'm gonna have to fire the scraper guy though and hire a new one. I see he made an extra hole in the the hide right there. There's the bullet holes. Okay, so hopefully this is a help uh, to some of you guys that are wanting to know. I, I frame every height twice. Uh, seems like uh, a lot of extra work maybe to do that, but uh, I think it's real important for my method, for the rest of it, as we eventually do, uh, do our series here on uh, brain tan, my method of brain tan. Um, you'll see uh, the reasoning behind drying all of these heights. So uh, the other, one of the things that's great about it is the storage. Uh, can you uh, swing around there, Justin, and focus on the, 
the wall, the, <laughs> all of the the hides there. There's about eighty, uh, about eighty hides hanging up there now. There's you're looking at the front row. There's three, three or four rows in behind there. So, uh, so there's about eighty hides hanging up there, and I've got more, more to go yet. Um, so I don't salt any hides. Uh, try not to freeze any hides. I try to scrape them fresh as soon as I get them. Uh, put them on the frame, dry them, and roll them up and hang them up. So that keeps me during hunting season when the hides are really coming. That keeps me working pretty hard for quite a few hours a day. Okay, Justin, I think that's probably probably good for this one.